Hi, Justin. Hey, Mark. How are you? Very, very well, thank you. Good, good. Yeah, thanks for. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm filling in for Heather, so I appreciate. Uh, I appreciate you calling in, and, and I got some good questions for you, I believe. So, so uh, you know, I guess I wanted to. You know, we wanted to talk about. You know, oh. you, you wore your your love of Patrick, right, and other sort of, you know, Australian genre films on your sleeve in, in Not Quite Hollywood. So, I mean, as a fan, why did you feel it was it was time for a remake or a reimagining of, of Patrick? Well, I wasn't necessarily the person who made the decision that the time was right. Um, but certainly when we were doing Not Quite Hollywood, um, Justin King, who was the researcher on the, the film, mm-hmm. and I sort of thought, of which films in, in this entire you know, canon of exploitation would be ripe for a remake. And there was only a few, and Patrick was certainly one of them, and we sort of mentioned this in passing to Tony Ganane, the producer of the original Patrick. And he told us that he'd been thinking about it for a long time, and even got treatments written by writers uh, in, in the US. And, um, you know, Justin pitched an outtake on it, and he really liked it. And uh, it just kind of started rolling from there. So it was a very, very... It wasn't like something that we set out, OK, we need to make a remake of Patrick. It was just something that, that Tony got very enthused about and went away and, and found the finance. So we were very, very lucky about being in the right place at the right time for me to get my first narrative feature up. Cool. Oh, okay, that's cool. How do you feel about the whole, the, you know, the way... Film films are going right. We have we have these remakes happening, and a lot of them are just, and you know a lot of them aren't aren't necessary. Yeah. But I mean, are, are there? Do you think are there certain films that should never well, be look, touched? I, I, um, you know, I I think that there are certainly some films that are right for remakes, and some films should never be touched. You know, um, you know, I think Patrick was a different story because Patrick, when you look at it now, is very, very much a film, the original, is very much a film that's rooted in 1978. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, and we thought that the story was so great that, you know, we could do something with that story. Obviously, there are films that, that, are, that are timeless and that are, that are perfect and that should just be left alone because there's no way in the world that you can add anything to them. But with Patrick, we thought that we could update it. We thought, well, we didn't actually update it. We thought we could even make more of a throwback film, um, you know, give it a, a sense of coming from an even earlier era. And um, we just loved that central premise that here was a guy who had unlimited powers but very, very limited ambitions with them. All he wanted to do was make that nurse fall in love with him. We thought that was such a great idea. We also thought with the, with the um, advances in technology that, you know, privacy was even more of an issue when we could throw that into the mix as well. So it seemed like a good idea. Cool. Do you, I mean, do you hope that, that people that come out and see this, this new Patrick, do you think that that is your goal or do you have a hope that that will inspire them to go and check out the Richard Franklin original? Well, I mean, I, we assume that, you know, there's a very, very, very small percentage of people who are going to see our film that have seen the original and... If it, if it makes people watch Richard's film or even more Australian genre films in general, you know, the job's done. Did, you, did your screenwriter, I mean, did, so did Justin, I mean, did he, did he look to the original Dade Roche screenplay for inspiration? Or, I mean, did, was there, there homages in the new one from the original? Or? Yeah, there are lots. We, 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 we started off by, by watching the original film a lot of times, writing down... I mean, I, I'd seen the film quite a few times, obviously, and I, I'd loved the film when I was a kid. It was a very, very um, important film in kind of my fan development. And um, we, we knew that there were certain iconic moments in there that we had to put into our film. I was also lucky enough to get um, Richard Franklin's original shooting script. Um, mm, cool. had a lot of scenes and dialogue that weren't in the original film, so some of those some of that dialogue worked its way in there. We also read the novelization of the film and said <laughs> some dialogue from that. So we were nothing if not, you know, complete in in, in you know in, in researching every single thing about the original before we made our film. But certainly on our set, we never thought that we were making someone else's film. We all sort of thought that this was a film that was its own, that was its own entity. Right. And I, I think our film is very, very different in terms of its sensibility, in terms of its style, in terms of its atmosphere. Uh, as I say, it, it's, it's Richard, Richard Franklin, the director of the original, was very much a Hitchcock protege. Right. And Patrick, the original, is very much a, you know, trying to be a film referencing Hitchcock. I wanted to make a film that, that, that referenced Hitchcock's proteges, that referenced Richard, that referenced the Palmer, that referenced, referenced Argento, all the filmmakers I loved growing up. So 
you know, we, that kind of the, the, the icing on the cake for me was when we got Pino Dinaggio to do the score. That sort of, uh, for me, really was the great moment and also helps set the film's, uh, and announces the film's sensibility from frame one with his beautiful orchestral score. Yeah, what do you, what, I mean, what do you think is so, why is his music so, so effective in, that, in the genre? Oh, I honestly can't answer that. It's an emotional thing. I mean, I, I, all I know is that I was listening to Pino all the way through. We were writing the film and, and through Pre, and, you know, it, it, it was stirring up the, the, the emotions of, or the, the um, style, certainly, that I wanted to put on the film. And, uh, you know, his style is unmistakable. It's certainly, you know, very... When you, when you watch De Palma films, you know when you're hearing a Pino Donaggio score as opposed to the other composers he worked with. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, my my favorite of his is is his score on, bl- on Blowout, right? That's the, that's the most amazing score. Yeah, I yeah I think everyone has a favorite. My favorite stress to kill, I have to say. Ah, nice. <laughs> and so and then um, I mean going someone's favorite will be Patrick. Going into I mean, do you, I mean, is there ever? And this, I guess it's sort of a cliche question, right? But I mean, going into something like Patrick, do you worry how fans of the original will react? It's, I mean, it, we live in this internet world, right, where, where social media attacks things like that. No, I I kind of knew that. Um, well, I, I I didn't worry about it because I knew that we'd done all we could. We were really, you know, we really well, this film wasn't made by people who had never seen the original and had no respect for the original. It was made by people who really did love the original. And so, you know, we we there's so many nods to the original throughout the film that that hardcore fans would be able to pick up. You know, there's props from the original, there's costumes from the original, there's even locations from the original, there's actors from the original. You know, if if you're a hardcore fan of the original, you are going to so many knowing and loving references from the original in this film and I figured if that's not enough to um, to dissuade them from hating our film then there's nothing else we can do <laughs> but, I mean with, with it do you, I mean do you think it was important for an Australian to make the film or, or could, a, uh, could an American have got away I mean yeah, Richard certainly was making international films and I've tried to make an international film I think the only thing that, that even vaguely gives away the fact that it's an Australian from Shani's accent. Mm-hmm. Sure. Gotcha. And then what about... You, are, we wanted it to be set in somewhere that was distinctly un-Australian. Yeah, it's not certainly in the outback. It's in a windswept coastal town that could be, you know, anywhere in, in the UK. Well, and it's out of time, right? Films are always often out of time in many respects, too, so... Yeah, certainly. I mean, it, it, people are surprised when the iPhone appears half an hour into the film because they, they really have no kind of grasp of where it's set because we just we wanted it to be so far away from civilization and prying eyes that, that, that these, uh, you know, medical malpractices could be happening that, you know, it, it certainly has a timeless quality. And that's, you know, we, that's reflected in, in the sets we built, in the costumes that they're wearing, in practically everything but the modern technology that sort of creeps in eventually. Right. Are you still? Uh, I, I have a, a thing here. Are you still attached to direct a remake of Fair Game? And if so, where's that at today? I am still attached to direct a remake of Fair Game, and uh, it's in really early stages. Justin is writing another script for Tony, and then we're going to start work on Fair Game. We sort of bolted out a treatment very much like we did with Patrick, which is you know watching the original film and and uh, and working out what we want to keep from it, the elements we want to keep, but certainly our fair game is going to be very much like Patrick and be a very different film to the original. Um, we, you know, the whole idea of it is to is to make a, a cross between the naked prey and straw dogs. I think that means anything to you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's great. And what, what makes you such a fan of the original fair game? And, and I mean, so we have it featured so prominently in, in Not Quite Hollywood, right? But yet it's it's such a... It's no, I think it features, it features so prominently in Not Quite Hollywood because it's so batshit crazy. Yeah, um, well, I mean, yeah, but it's still not a film that a lot of Americans know. No, not at all. Look, uh, it, uh, with me, it was just, you know, I, I loved... Tony once again mentioned I've got the right to, to remake Fair Game, and I said, well, well, you know, I'd be really keen to do it if I could do this. And the whole idea was to, to make a film that... Like I said, plays like a cross between the Naked Prey and 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 Straw Dogs, which is which is a revenge film, but mm-hmm. almost with no dialogue, and and with a really great, strong, 
central female character. And, uh, you know, I think we're, gonna, we're really going to strip all the exploitation elements out of their game and, and make it, uh, you know, a, a film you can stand up and cheer when you're watching it. So hopefully, I mean, that's what I wanted to do with it. Cool. And hopefully we'll be able to do that. Cool. So that was, that was the appeal for me. Nice. Any idea when we can expect to see your uh, Electric Boogaloo Cannon film film? Yeah, well, it's, it's scheduled due to funding, uh, due to funding obligations to premiere in Australia uh, in, in late July, so you'll be seeing it soon after that, I hope. Nice, nice. Yeah, did, uh, this is sort of unrelated, but I was just wondering if you paid any attention to uh, Tough Guys Don't Dance. That's one of my favorite films for Canon. Yeah, we have. Yeah, that, that will certainly feature in the documentary. Nice. And Trust me, if you've got a favorite canon film, it will be in this documentary. <laughs> <laughs> Unless, and I, I, I won't say anything more. But yeah, look, obviously, you know, there are so many key important films in the, in the canon canon uh, that you know, are all going to get some kind of guernsey. Cool. And then this is a... This is they made so many films, it might be very fleeting, though. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm excited to see it because, you know, they're such an interesting company. Be it, they have that really great art house phase with King Lear and, you know, so yeah. there's a lot of good stuff. So, and then the... Uh, I mean, it's interesting. It's, I mean, unlike Not Quite Hollywood and Machete Maidens, I think this is going to much, be much more of a more character-based documentary, and so there's a lot more pathos about, you know, Yoram and, and Menach and... Oh, right, right, got you, yeah. It, it, is, it isn't just going to be a greater pitch package of their films. It's going to be sort of certainly following their uh, struggles. The story to, uh, of the filmmakers and not the films as much. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, this is a fan question. <laughs> if you could collaborate on a film with Tarantino, what, what do you guys think you guys could come up with together? I have no idea. Uh, I think the world needs more World War II mission movies, to tell you the truth. <laughs> uh, or, or more heist movies. They're the two genres I love. World War II mission movies and heist movies. So I think, you know, combine the two like a Kelly's Heroes, we just should keep making those endlessly. Nice. 